Hello, everyone, and welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Good. So today we are talking about the Villiger Sandoro Maduro Toro, and this is a, a true Toro, six inches by 50 ring gauge. And um, this is out of the Chiritos Tabahara Limitada factory in Brazil. And uh, Cigar has a wrapper of Brazilian Mata Fina, uh, binder is Brazilian Mata Norte, and the filter is a mix of Brazilian Mata Fina and Mata Norte. Um, price point on this cigar is $12, and it was released uh, back in September of 2015. Uh, so let's jump into our pre-light experience with the cigar. So June, what was your pre-light experience like with it? Um, so first when I was reading the literature of the blend, um, so Brazil factory, uh, basically a Brazil Puro, mm -hmm. um, I was really, really interested to see uh, what it'll smoke like. So. Right. Um, so I thought that the cigar had a nice Colorado Maduro wrapper. Mm -hmm. uh, and it shows some good oil content. Things are well pressed and seams are pretty tight. Um, head is finished off with a well applied triple cap. So given the pinch test, uh, the cigar feels well bunched and rolled because I didn't feel any soft spots and it had a nice uh, uniform gift to it. Um, so pre-light uh, aromas, uh, pre-light aromas of the wrapper, uh, I got floral perfume and cedar. Um, on the nose, nosing the foot, um, I, I got uh, sweet natural tobacco notes, uh, white pepper and cedar. Uh, the cold draw, uh, that dry cardboard that I get a lot of, uh, and that same sweet natural tobacco notes. What about you? Uh, yeah, I thought it had like a nice milk chocolate brown color to the wrapper. Um, there were some large size veins um, and some smaller ones. Uh, the seams were super smooth, almost invisible. Um, caps were applied really nicely. And um, the bands almost appear to be uh, two separate bands, but there's a, a color line that goes between them that's almost identical to the wrapper color. So that's what kind of makes it look like it's almost two, um, two separate uh, bands, but it, you know, it's one. Um, and then the upper portion of the band's burgundy, well, the bottom portion's green. Uh, everything outlined in gold, um, and the cigar name uh, is in red lettering on that kind of that the bottom portion of the band. Uh, aroma from the wrapper, it was a slightly sweet barnyard, and uh, the foot was um, a very sweet uh, fruit uh, flavor, which I, you know I describe that as as cherry. Um, pre light draw, it was some of that same cherry sweetness. Um, so, you know, very similar from what I got from the foot. Um, but that was kind of what the, what the pre-light was like for me. So getting into flavor, take us kind of first third to final third. What was the flavor experience like? Um, so first of the cigar, I got very soft and subtle notes, of uh, cedar, uh, like a medium minus body, sweet cream, a little bit of charred bitterness and dried nuts. Uh, so through the nose, um, I started getting uh, white pepper spice and cedar, which was great because I didn't get much spice at all through the through the mouth draws. Um, the finish was a uh, slight charred bitterness and cedar. Um, so body within the first third, uh, medium minus uh, to medium, but kind of itching towards the medium, so, but not quite medium. Um, strength is at a medium minus. Uh, moving into the Second third, uh, so second third, uh, kind of the, the profile kind of started waking up. Um, so first the body ramped up to a medium, uh, and I also get fuller flavors of the sweet cedar, uh, dried nuts, and uh, charred bitterness. Um, so a couple of uh, new additions, um, new flavors came in. Um, so I got some nice, warm, inviting black pepper spice uh, and, and a milk coffee or coffee with milk. Um, through the nose, uh, I still get that inviting white pepper spice and cedar and the dried nuts. Uh, the finish, there's a, uh, there's a more of a pronounced chart bitterness in dried nuts, whereas within the first third, that bitterness, well, it was there, but it was very subtle along with all the other flavors that I mentioned. So, uh, so strengths continue to be at a, uh, medium minus mark within the second third. Uh, lastly, within, uh, the last third, um, I felt like in the beginning of the last third, 
the profile started getting noticeably uh, oily and thicker, um, and, it, and it hit my front and uh, rear palate the most on that. Uh, still got the notes of the sweet cedar. Um, the, the nuttiness was a bit more well-defined. I, I started picking up hazelnuts as compared to just like a dry nuttiness of a general nuttiness. Um, still got that charred bitterness, uh, black pepper spice. Uh, the retro gave me white pepper spice, cedar, and dry nuts. Uh, the finish still consisted of charred bitterness um, and uh, dry nuts. So, but uh, halfway through the last third, um, that charred bitterness really ramped up, uh, and it really drowned out all the other uh, flavors that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it and it really, you know, killed it for me. Um, so, and then. Uh, Body and strength, uh, it was continuously uh, um, medium, medium, minus. Okay. Right. Yeah, initial light, it was uh, like an earthy woodiness. Um, and then a few draws as it went in, um, the earthiness continued. Um, and it kind of came across as dirty at times, but not dirty in a bad way. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it was like, it just kind of tasted like dirt. But, it, you know, sometimes dirt can taste good, I guess. Um, and the, the woodiness was still present. Um, but it was more kind of on the finish. And then the retro hail was primarily woody with a little bit of earthiness uh, on the finish there as well. Uh, three quarters of an inch in, uh, I got a little bit of sweetness that joined the profile. And then just past the inch mark, I was getting a little um, slight metallic note. But after a few draws, that metallic note went away <clears throat> and things went back to the slightly sweet earthiness in wood. And then an inch and a half in, the woodiness became um, a bit damp. Uh, which blended well with the earthiness. It was, I guess, I don't know. Sometimes people can consider earthiness as that kind of a uh, a damp forest floor or, or whatever you want to kind of describe it as. Um, but near the end of the third, the dampness from the wood went away and it became a bit more defined as um, cedar with a little slight spice to it. And the strength was, was right at medium for me there. And then second, third, it continued with the earthiness and the slightly spicy cedar. Uh, but the retro hill was uh, a toasty oak at that point. And then a quarter inch in, uh, the cedar really took over the earthiness. And then a half inch in, uh, the cedar transitioned to that same toasty oak that I was previously getting on the retro hail. Retro hail. Um, and then the profile was was really similar on both, so in the mouth flavor and, and on the retro hail. Uh, a few draws later, uh, a dull black pepper started to mix in with the oak, and um, the retro hail stayed at that toasty oak uh, profile. Uh, an inch and a half in, a little bit of minerality started to come in, and it mixed in with the oak and the black pepper. And then nearing the end of the third, uh, some of that earthiness came back, and it mixed in with the oak and minerality. Um, but the black pepper had gone away. Um, the earthiness also made it into the retro hell at that point, um, and the strength kind of went up uh, just slightly above uh, medium from where it was in the, in the first third. Uh, final third, uh, the oak earthiness and the minerality was continuing. Um, quarter inch in, um, oak was primary flavor. Earthiness and minerality were primarily on the finish at that point. Uh, there was also a slight bitterness that was coming through on the finish. Uh, about an inch in, uh, a little bit of mintiness joined in and it mixed with that, um, that uh, oak and the earthiness. Uh, but the bitterness had gone away, so it was really just there for a, for a few draws. Um, an inch and a quarter in, uh, the profile went back to the primarily oak fl oak flavor um, with a little bit of mintiness there in the background, and the earthiness had gone away. Uh, Retro Hill was just really consisting of oak at that point. And then an inch and a half in, uh, a little bit of char mixed in with the oak and the mintiness, um, and the strength profile was still uh, kind of at that slightly above uh, medium profile. So getting into performance, uh, burn and draw, what was your experience like? Um, I thought the burn was fantastic. Uh, it was slow, cool burning, and had a very even burn to it. Um, and I smoked it for about two hours. Um, the ash held on really tight uh, with no flowering, and I got solid chunks of um, ash that averaged uh, about an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. um, on the draw, the draw was good. Uh, it, was a, it was slightly tight for my liking, but nonetheless, you know, uh, it was really good, um, and, you know, I'm just being nitpicky in that sense. Yeah. Um, so, you know, typical of what I do is if, if I cut the cap and the draw is tight, 
I keep cutting it until I get to the very end of that cap. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what this I did, uh, but it didn't do anything to the draw. It still right. stayed consistently, you know, little tight. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the burn was fantastic. I mean, I, I would say that this is probably the model burn that every cigar should aspire to, uh, razor sharp, um, Ash held on in two inch segments. Um, Ash was super tight. Um, it was just really nice. I mean, it was really just something to kind of look at and to say, you know, this is, this is fantastic. Um, the draw for me was pretty tight when the cigar started and it kind of slightly eased up as the cigar went along. So it got almost right, right to where I like it getting into that final third. Um, I didn't do any additional cuts. Um, I just wanted to see how it went along, Um, but it didn't, didn't really cause any issues for me. I don't think it uh, had any effect on the flavors at all for me. So overall experience, what was your, what was your uh, take on it? Uh, I think this amongst all the Villiger premium cigars in their portfolio, I think this is a step above that. Um, The second third was a sweet spot for me. Uh, And I mean, I felt like the first third was just kind of, it's almost like, the cigar was waking up from a nap and it just kind of was kind of eh. <laughs> right. But uh, it, it picked up in the second, third, and, and that's what I love most about it. Um, I think given the fact that, you know, this doesn't have a lot of spice, this doesn't have a lot of strength, um, I think a newer cigar smoker would appreciate something like this. Um, I think that – so personally for me, of all the – Brazilian Matafinas out there that I've smoked, they were either too sickening sweet and creamy for me, mm-hmm. or they are too subtle. And, and, and you, you just keep trying to reach for those flavors, but it's not just quite there. Right. Um, this wasn't exactly on those average ones uh, because of my experience with especially the second, third. But, you know, um, if you're going to try any of the new Villager offerings, I think this is a one to try to, to perhaps change your mind on, on other offerings. Right. Yeah. I thought the cigar was fairly one dimensional in flavors. I mean, it had a, uh, you know, kind of a primary set of flavors in regards to like the Oak and uh, some of the earthiness and things like that. And there were just a, you know, a few small transitions along the way, Uh, but the flavors were good. Um, So I think it's a cigar that's definitely worth trying. Um, The strength level makes it approachable for most smokers. Um, I just think that, um, it being a darker profile, some people may not, um, you know, some people don't like that. So if, if you're someone that's not into like some of the earthiness or some charred wood flavors, then that it might not be a cigar for you. Um, but if you are, I think it's definitely worthwhile in um, picking some up. Um, I would say based on the strength level and, the, and that darker profile, it's probably more of a midday or an evening smoke. Um, and it'll probably pair well with, you know, brown spirits and things like that. Um, if you're into, you know, pairing drinks while you're, while you're smoking, which I think most people are into that. So, but overall, yeah, definitely something, I mean, worth picking one up, see what you think about it, um, to see if it's something that you might want to, um, kind of explore a little bit more on. So getting into the scores, you gave it a 6.27. I gave it a 5.93. How do you think the score fits with your experience? Mm, I, I think if I were to purely think about the flavor profile, I think it's a little high, mm-hmm. my score, because I, I, I think it's for the most part an average cigar. Mm-hmm. But the fact that it had a incredible burn and a good draw has, in other words, the construction helped out the score for me. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, basically with that score, I'm saying that it's a little bit above average, and um, I'm good with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think my score fits well. Um, you know, flavors are good. Uh, performance is pretty much fantastic. Um, so I think with those, you know, kind of aspects in it, that's that's what that's kind of where that uh, score fits in. Um, you know, definitely something that's above average, uh, worth giving it a shot and seeing if it's something that, you, you know, you enjoy. Um, I, you know, it's not going to be for everybody, I don't think. But um, I, I think it's probably a brand that not a lot of um, smokers kind of gravitate towards uh, just because of, I think they're mainly known for their machine-made um, products. So, you know, they've uh, they've t- taken a shot at the premium side a few times. Um, so this is just kind of their, their most recent offering. So um, definitely something to kind of revisit and, and see if there might be something uh, in their portfolio that uh, kind of fits your profile. So any final thoughts from you on the cigar? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. 
So if you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us there, uh, but also check out the full written review on the website, developingpallets.com. And be sure to follow us on all the social media channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+. And uh, thank you for watching, and we will catch you all on the next one.